Hello and welcome to Cooking with Countryside. Today we're going to be making acorn squash fritters with a garlic parsley sauce. So what you'll need to get started fresh from the market is garlic, an acorn squash, and you can use any winter squash you would like, but for today we're going to use an acorn squash, fresh parsley, and an egg. Some other things that you'll need to complete this recipe are lemon juice, black pepper, olive oil or your favorite oil, flour, and red pepper flakes. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to cut this squash, and I'm gonna show you how. So first, we're gonna cut off the ends. Now I might need a sharper knife. So just like that, so there's a flat side on each end. Next, as you can see, there's grooves along the outside. So we're going to cut these into wedges at the groove. So for each groove, I'm going to cut out a slice like this. So I brought my knife to the middle and just cut it. And if the grooves are really small, you could do wider wedges as well. Ah! <laughs> Slipping away. So now we have them all cut into wedges. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get these seeds out of the inside. So we're just going to start at the top and work our way down, kind of scraping that out. I'm gonna actually use a serrated knife for this one because that's gonna make it a little easier, I think. So I'm just gonna do that for each one. And then set it to the side and you can save the seeds to cook them later if you want, or you can compost them. So once those are all done, you can just clear the seeds to the side or discard them. And the next step is going to be peeling the outside. So there's two options to peel this outside green. We can either use a knife and just cut along the outside, which I may need my sharp knife again. This might actually be a little too hard. I don't have a proper knife for this. Or probably the easier and safer way <laughs> is to use a vegetable peeler like this. <laughs> and it's slipping away. And you can just peel off the outside. It is a little bit slippery, so be careful. It might run away on you. A towel might help your grip if you need it. There we go. So in the end, your pieces are going to look like this. No seeds, no not shell, I don't think that's the right words, but no green outside. And there's a similar process for um, preparing like butternut squash and other winter squashes. You don't eat the seeds, so we remove those. And we don't eat the shell either. But now if you were just to bake this, you could bake it in the shell and then just scoop out the inside when it's done. And that'll save you a step because it'll be easier to remove. But for this recipe, we will be shredding this and then making it into a fritter so we're not cooking it um, in the oven. So we'll need to remove this shell. Skin is probably the proper word, not shell. <laughs> And so if you are having trouble peeling these all the way, what I normally do is I grip one side and then peel the bottom half of that and then I switch. So I'm not trying to get all the way up by the top of my thumb. So I peel about half of it. Now I'm gonna switch my grip and I can peel the other half. Okay. So now that we have our squash peeled and seeded, the next step is going to be to shred it. 
Now, if you don't have like a cheese grater or something similar, you could always put this in a food processor and get it fine. But it's gonna be a little bit nicer if you have more strands rather than, um, what's it called? Just little chunks. But in the end, it'll all work out no matter how you grind it. So we're gonna use two and a half cups of shredded squash. So you get a nice muscle workout. So now our squash is finely grated. And the next step is we're gonna add a little bit of pepper, probably about half a teaspoon, but you can add more or less depending on your taste. I normally don't measure pepper, I just kind of sprinkle it in there. And then we're also going to add an egg. So a nice egg, we're just gonna crack it in. And then I'm just gonna get a fork to disturb the yolk and break it up and then mix it all in. And this egg is gonna help the squash stick together when we put it in the pan. And then the next thing we're gonna add is flour. We're gonna add about a third of a cup of flour. And you can use all-purpose flour for this or a similar flour. Um, you could use spelt flour, anything like that. Just, I would avoid using bread flour. <laughs> um, you could use whole wheat flour too. It's just gonna give it a little bit different of a taste. And so I'm just gonna, again, mix that in and it's gonna start to stick together and you can add more flour as needed if the squash still doesn't look like it's sticking well. Okay, so now my mixture kind of looks like this. I know it's harder to see, but it's definitely sticking together a lot more. So next is the fun part, we're gonna cook them. So I'm going to just use a skillet and I'm gonna grease the pan. And we're actually gonna wanna add a little bit of olive oil too and get that spread nicely. We're gonna drop about a quarter cup onto the pan once it's heated, and then we can press it down a little bit with a spatula. We're gonna cook it for about two minutes on each side. So I'm just going to fill up about a quarter cup, give or take, and then drop it onto the pan and make it a little bit flatter with a spatula. And the size of your pan will depend on how much you can put in at once. And also how much you flatten it will determine how big your fritters are. So if you want thin fritters, you can flatten it more. And if you want them to be a bit, little bit thicker, you can flatten them less. Mine right now is probably about half an inch thick. So while these are cooking, we can start to make our garlic parsley sauce. This you can make in a blender or a food processor. And it's pretty easy. We are going to mix together a clove of garlic, three cloves actually, or if you have a large garlic stem, we can do a little bit less. We're gonna mix together one cup of fresh parsley, two teaspoons of lemon juice, and one teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And again, if you're not so keen on the spice, you can disregard the red pepper flakes but I'm gonna just go with two cloves for this because they're rather large. And so I'm just going to chop them up slightly um, because the blender or your food processor will do the rest of the work. And those fritters are sizzling nicely behind me. And if you would like to know a little bit more about garlic, go ahead and check out our blog. There have been a few posts on it recently about planting it and just some fun facts in general. So if you're interested in learning more about its history and about how it grows, definitely go check out our blog. Okay, probably time to flip these. Oh yeah, that's nice and golden. And so 
Now that I flipped them, I'm going to prepare a plate with a paper towel on it. This is just to soak up any extra oil. Put that in the corner there. So I have my garlic ready to go. The next thing we're gonna add is about a cup of fresh parsley. And you can use any type of parsley. I'm just gonna fill this up here. And then we're gonna add two teaspoons of lemon juice. It's probably a little bit more. And then a little bit of red pepper flakes. And then we're gonna bind it all together with about a quarter cup of olive oil. And so we are just going to mix that all together. And I'm using this little handheld food processor, but you could use a blender or an actual food processor. But first, getting these fritters and they're looking really nice right now. So I'm going to get the next batch going. And I'm on medium to high heat right now on your stove. So these ones I'm making slightly bigger. But now again, time to make our garlic parsley sauce. Okay. So as you can hopefully see, it's definitely a thick sauce. I don't know if you, you could call it a topping, maybe might be a more appropriate word. But it's gonna have that nice flavor in there. So once your fritters are done, you can stack them on a plate or just leave one by its own. And we can add a little bit of that garlic parsley sauce right on top. And then you're ready to enjoy it. Thank you for watching. And I can't wait to see any photos that you've made of recipes with your winter squash or things you bought from the market. If you're interested in finding out how you can get these ingredients to make this recipe, visit countrysidefoodandfarms.org. Thank you and happy fall!